Hey everyone, this is Vinzana from Training on Wheels. Thank you so very much for all of your questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are super excited to present to you a new segment entitled Tips in Minutes. Our first question comes from PowerPoint. We have all seen PowerPoint presentations, whether they were good ones or not so good ones. This, question's, this question comes from an education professional. She wants to know, how can I make my PowerPoint more interactive for third graders? Adults are complicated enough, but children, you have to pull out all of the tips and tricks. So we're gonna show you a feature in PowerPoint. Let's go. All right, so let's get into it, shall we? We are looking at a slide. Nothing too fancy, simple slide, but what we are trying to do is have our students to identify the verb. And we want to use the features that are available in PowerPoint to make this happen. So we're going to be covering two things. We're going to be inserting shapes as well as animating such shapes. Let us begin. Let's start by inserting. To insert a shape, all right, and I think that will be the best choice to identify the verb, we're going to go to the Insert tab. Over to the left in the Illustrations group, you should see the Shapes drop down, and you have a whole heap of shapes here available for you. I think an oval will do the job for us today, so I'm going to select the oval. I recommend any time that you are inserting, whether it's an object, a picture, or a shape, that you do so on an area where there's nothing. That gives you an opportunity to format it and tweak it before actually beginning to utilize it. So once my cursor is in a cross position, I'm going to press the left button on my mouse, hold it down, and draw my oval. Once the oval has been inserted, because it is an object, you will get an additional tab. That tab is called the Contextual Drawing Tools Format tab. Now what we're going to do in this tab is simply format our shape so that when we place it over the correct answer, it will not overlap or it won't cover it up. So with it selected, I'm going to start by making sure that this shape is empty. Format tab. Over to the left in the Shape Styles group, you should see Shape Fill, and then you should see No Fill. The other thing that I want to do is just make sure that this particular shape um, actually has a color, all right, so that we can see it. And I would like to change the, the weight of such line. So I'm going to select Shape Outline. I'll choose red to go with our theme. I'll go back to Shape Outline, I'll choose Weight, and I'll go with kind of a thicker option here. Okay, so now that we have our shape, what we are going to do is apply it over the correct answer. And what I'm doing now is simply just resizing the shape. All right, there we go. So now we have the shape. It is around the correct word, and now we need to apply the transitions to the shape. To do that, we're going to select the shape again. Excuse me, the animation to the shape. We're going to select the shape again, select animations, and then over to the left in the animation group, there should be a more button that's going to give you a whole heap again of options of what you can do to this particular shape. So what I want to do is get my students excited about choosing the right word. So I'm going to choose for purposes of this activity, the fly in animation. All right, now we repeat the steps for the next two lines. Now that we've completed the, the steps for the next two lines, we're going to take a look and see how we did. All right, so let's check it out. All right, now that we're done, let's see how we did. So we're going to have our sentence pop up. I am using the left button on my mouse, and as I am clicking it, each sentence is showing up independently. Now we're going to give our students an opportunity to answer. As they answer, 
we again press the enter button, the next arrow, or the left button on our mouse, and your items are circled. This is how we can insert a shape and apply animation to such shape. Now that we have successfully completed our slide by inserting a shape as well as animating that shape, we're going to show you just a few slides here of different ways that you can use the animation feature. Here it goes. All right, this one is pretty cool. It will allow the students to fill in the blanks with the correct words. And again, we're going with that theme. All right, same concept. This time we're inserting a text box, all right, and then animating. All right, and as we recap the steps of utilizing animations in PowerPoint, select the text or object to animate. On the animations tab, we're going to go over to the left in the animation group and select the animation of our choice. And then we make Magic Hop happen. Thank you so very much for your question. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And there you go, guys. That's just one feature that you can use in PowerPoint to make your presentations more engaging and interactive. Thank you so very much for tuning in to Tips in Minutes with Training on Wheels. If you have any additional questions, you can go ahead and leave them below, send us a message, or shoot us an email at info at trainingonwheels.com. Until next time, take care, guys.